Hey there guys, it's your favorite Asian robot, hopefully your favorite Dark Tide partner, and welcome to another video. Today, I'm going to show you one advanced DPS trick that I myself have not really gotten into using until right now. Um, in case you guys didn't know this, and honestly, a lot of people don't pay attention to the details, many people know how to inspect a weapon. Obviously, when you inspect a weapon, there's a lot of data here. You can learn all about the fire rate, reload, stamina, all the what all these different things mean. Stuff like that. You can learn about all that. But many people don't press the tab button to bring up the attack patterns. All right. This will show you exactly what kind of damage you're going to be dealing against different types of armor. All right. Against an unarmored target, just for just for testing sake, unarmored, you're going to be hitting about 55 per shot. Flak armored, you're hitting a different rate again. All right. And the more you learn about this, the better. However, not all armor is the same. Hitting targets like this, all right, versus hitting targets like that, no damage, all right? You gotta know what type of, um, what type of armor each target has, and the meat grinder will show that to you. Now, you can apply this principle to any weapon in any class, all right? What you ideally want to do is you ideally want to have a wep two weapons that can handle different things. Let me demonstrate this with staves as an example. Did you know that if you were to use the surge staff and you were to inspect it, the surge staff deals additional damage against, if you look at the secondary action, which is the lightning, unarmored targets actually take way less damage than armored targets. All right. Let's have a, let's have a quick squiz of that and see that in action, shall we? Against unarmored targets, you don't even get a kill on them. Armor targets, you're you're seeing damage in the 600s, 500s. The surge staff was originally designed to help you kill elites. All right, that's something that's very important. Let's contrast this with, and I'm gonna piss a lot of people off saying this, but I don't really care. The Percatus staff. I love pronouncing it that way, and you guys will have to deal with it. At least those that don't like my pronunciation. If you take a look at the weapon stats, the Brigadus for the secondary action deals its best damage against unarmored targets and lighter armored targets, even maniacs. Uh, maniacs are the specialists, I'll show you that in a second. But against Carapace armored targets, it does pretty much nothing. All right. So against the big crusher, oops, sorry, I didn't equip it. My bad. Bear with me, all right? Bear with me. Equipped. There. Even against the maulers and whatnot, you're gonna deal a fair amount of damage, and if you stack up your soul blades, they will burn to death really nicely, all right? But if even if you do a full charge, you're not gonna do shit against a carapace armored target. He's barely gonna take anything. So what do you do when you have to deal with this guy? That's when you have to rely on Brain Burst. Because it's not like your Purgatus Staff is going to do anything. So if you're going to use a setup like Four Sword Purgatus Staff, you got to know who you can kill and who you can't kill. This is what makes the greatest difference between the DPS that really know what they're doing and the DPS that are still new to the game and haven't really explored. You might like a particular gun or a particular weapon. Let's take a look at the Antax uh, Mark V Combat Axe. Did you know that for the melee weapons, you can even break down exactly what each blow of the combo is going to do? All right. You can actually do that and check that out, which is really quite awesome. All right. This special action is a quick poke attack that ignores stagger reduction, increased impact and damage versus armored enemies. Against Carapace armored enemy, you can, you can literally deal a lot of stagger damage and just poke them back. All right. So let's equip this uh, axe right now and have a look. The axe is well known for its ability to practically one-shot trash mobs. Now this is T4, alright? In T4, you're gonna knock the heads off all of these guys. But, did you notice something? Check this out again. Alright, watch carefully. Hang on. Did you see it? Because if you go back, alright, and this is why it's so important to also test in the meat grinder, please do. Don't just look and accept the facts as they are. A powerful attack targeting one enemy. A powerful attack targeting one enemy. 
Huh, funny. I just hit two. With the right angle. Oops, sorry. You can easily hit two targets, alright? It won't always happen, but in general, despite it being able to only target one enemy, it's the whole swing. In a horde, you can sometimes cleave more than one. Remember that. Alright? It's these little things that people don't expect. And this is why both testing and inspecting the weapon and understanding its damage pattern is so, so important. Um, for example, a single attack, alright, against a carapace armor target. Are you seeing a deal like, okay, watch. 300, 200, alright. Unyielding, 200, 100, 300, 178. Uh, hold the phone. Now, this is due to its perks, obviously. But, but, what I want you to keep in mind is that that, these perks don't factor in, alright, into this thing. Okay? The carapace armor target took way more than 52 damage. Alright? And I want you guys to remember that. You need to test for and see for yourself. Look. This is taking way more than 52. And it builds up because of the perks. The brittleness and the thunderous blows. Alright? It builds up. So, if you test your weapons in that way and inspect them in detail, you have an expectation in your mind. My weapon's gonna do this much. My weapon's gonna do that much. Let's take a look at something else. Opposite scenario. Okay, opposite scenario. Let's take the Void Strike Staff. Um, this one will do. Okay. If we inspect the Void Strike Staff right now, okay, and we take a look at the secondary action, Carapace Armored. About If you hit the weak spot, it's going to be 446. If you do a normal body shot, that's going to be 347 against a Carapace Armored target. Let's go see if that's actually the case. All right. If you blindly trust information, 230. That, that's not 300. Even against black armor, 230. But hold the phone. If I check this out, right? I thought black armor was supposed to have a little more. Lo and behold. Flat, oh, flat armor is the same as carapace. Sorry, I, I was unyielding armor that has a bit more. Okay, let's test that again. My bad. Don't want to give bad information. Unyielding! Oh yeah, so unyielding does take more. That is true. So, you, but you are dealing less. Even against a flak armor target, you are dealing less than what is stated. Alright? And that's a full charge. Let's do it again. All right, that's a body shot right there. Now we do the same here. It's still not dealing as much. Still not dealing as much. Do you kind of see that? So, although this item says that it can deal oh so much damage, um, that's not always trustworthy, which is why, again, you have to test. The Surge Staff, as you saw, deals additional damage to armor targets. The Void Strike Staff has a particular damage amount assigned to the Carapace and Armor targets, but it does less than that. Alright, so although, you know, when you inspect, you're going to learn something, do also test it. This is just the point I want to make. Alright, for those of you that want to become better at DPS, alright, not only do you have to think about your loadout, okay, so I'm just going to give you an example of a loadout. Let's say I want to, I want to be an elite killer. All right, so I could go with um, the Antax Mark IV Combat Axe. I could go with a Surge Staff here because I want to be an elite killer. I want to kill elites better than anything else. Okay, so if I've got something like this, what's my Horde clear? All right, maybe I'll manage that through feats instead, such as Ascend and Blaze. Maybe if I've got various ways of gaining warp charges, I could do something like that. That's how you configure your loadout if you really want to upgrade the kind of damage you're going to deal. All right, so I hope that this information helps because I myself didn't even take a look. I didn't realize that, you know, even after going into this, all right, and yes, I am dumb. I admit that. Um, I didn't realize that even after going into this, okay, 
this wasn't the be all and end all. I actually had to bring this whole thing up and, and take a look here because I was like, oh, okay. So if I were to use this last gun and uh, go around over here and start popping heads, then bada bing, bada boom, you know, things are going to start dying real easy. You know, I didn't, I didn't realize that that was the case. You know, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I just, I just, you know, equipped a gun that I thought was good in terms of damage and whatnot, but I never went beyond that. And that's the problem. That's where I was a fucking moron because I clearly didn't understand that there was this whole freaking chart that could teach me a lot of other stuff. All right. So just be aware that this does exist and you can refer to it, use it in the meat grinder, plan your loadout because once you want to get to that upper level of gameplay, this is one insane way of improving your DPS and making sure that your character is genuinely prepared. You might like a couple of weapons, but if you're going to bring two weapons that aren't good against carapace armor, you're going to have to start praying that your team can handle that instead of you. All right. So I hope this information helps you guys because I certainly didn't know about it. Um, and well, maybe, maybe I'm stupid and you guys are smarter. You know, I, I don't know. Um, I, I admit that I might be a bit dumb sometimes. All right. But if you guys didn't know, then I hope this information helps you. Thank you guys so much for watching this. As always, if this is, if this video is useful to you, get it to 200 likes. That's all I'm asking for. And of course, before we go, let me thank my channel members that made video, a video like this possible because you know, without them, um, honest to God, I wouldn't be making this stuff. So a uh, big thank you to all of my channel members right now. Uh, let me, let me do this. Starting at the top level plus ultra, we've got Death Dawning 982. We've got Jerry Fast, Joshua Moritz, Rogue Assassin, Old Mr. Green Buff, and Zach MG. They're all prestige. Thank you guys so much. Um, in terms of our honored robots, we have the following individuals: Daniel Morris, Brian Lancaster, Mason, The Oculus, Wild Hunt, Coda CMF, uh, AKJ, also known as New F. Coda CMF, by the way, is literally our longest member. Uh, Kami SMH, Jammer Boy, Conrad C, Miss Eve, Jacob Gabrick. Nate the Great, Curtis Sussler, MJ, Shadow, Corey Ryu, Benjamin Savage, Lady Neo, Anarchy Inc., Greasy Burger, and Stefan Geyer. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate uh, everything you guys have done for me. And thank you to all of our cool bots as well. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell notification if you like my stuff. And I'll see you on the next one, okay? Get you later.